Hi guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd. Welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today, we're taking a look at something entirely new for the series, something that I've never looked at before on the channel, a wooden wristwatch from a company called Yod, which is actually spelled J-O-R-D. It's spelled like Jord. And as a matter of fact, you will probably hear me refer to them as Jord several times later in this video, uh, inadvertently pronouncing it that way, but I have it on good authority that it is in fact pronounced Yod. And that is because it is a Danish word, and it means earth. And that is no coincidence, because Jod appears to take great pride in the fact that uh, all of the woods used in their watches are environmentally sustainable and ethically sourced as well. And... Uh, Yod has a whole range of watches, uh, ranging in price from about 150 US dollars up to about 500 US dollars. That includes uh, quartz movement types with batteries and mechanical types. Uh, and we're looking at an automatic mechanical type watch here today. We'll talk more about what that means in a little bit. But uh, there is a link down in the video description if you would like to peruse Yord's uh, catalog of wooden watches. Now, the watch that I am reviewing here today is one of their more expensive models. It is uh, this one right here. I guess I can show you, can't I? Uh, it is called the Meridian Nightfall. Here, let's focus it there. The series is Meridian, the Meridian series. And this particular colorway, or a set of woods and colors used in it, is the Nightfall colorway. Uh, and this watch goes for 430 US dollars on Yord's website. And that's not especially cheap, but... I have some good news for you, and that is that we are running a giveaway. Uh, so all you have to do is head on over to uh, www.yordwatches.com slash g slash the ASMR nerd. And that is also linked down in the video description so that you can just click through there. Uh, you just have to enter your name and your email and you will be entered to win $180 towards a Yod watch of your choice. Uh, and this contest runs for two weeks from the time of posting of this review video. So that means it closes on September the 23rd at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, make sure you get your entry in before then. But even if you don't win, uh, I have some good news for you. Uh, all of you can get $25 off a Yod watch with the promo code the ASMR nerd, all one word, all lowercase. Uh, so you can head on over to Yod's website and use that code there if you like. Now, with all of this said, all this watch talk, let me be perfectly clear. I am no expert on watches in any way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, I haven't worn a wristwatch for many, many years. Uh, but, as many of you probably know, I don't like to do things in half measures. I like to make sure that I do a good job of whatever I set out to accomplish. So, in order to provide you guys with the best and most useful review possible, uh, I took this as an opportunity 
to educate myself a little bit about mechanical watches, to learn a little bit about them. And uh, it turns out they're really interesting and there's a lot to know. <laughs> and so this video is going to be like 70% review, we'll say. It's kind of arbitrary, but and like 30% beginner's guide to mechanical watches. And I hope that you guys learn some stuff along the way and find it interesting. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Yod's Meridian Nightfall Wooden Watch. All right, so here we have the Jord Nightfall in box. This black cardboard box is the one that it shipped in. And uh, I'm not showing you the exterior because it's absolutely plastered with uh, shipping information with my address and stuff. So, but uh, you'll have to trust me that uh, it arrived in decent shape. The exterior of the box is pretty plain. It just says uh, you know, fragile on it. It has the Jord branding on it. Not a whole lot else to see. It's kind of a big cube, approximately. Uh, and then it comes uh, packed inside like this, in this lovely little wooden box. That's what George calls a, a humidor, which I think is a term commonly used for cigar boxes. Uh, but the idea is that it keeps the contents inside in the right kind of atmosphere, the right temperature and humidity or whatever. But uh, anyway, so uh, it ships relatively well protected. Uh, there's a a cardboard piece that fits in top here, prevents this from moving around, and you'll see that uh, when we lift this out, there is um, a cardboard packing in the bottom that keeps it in place as well. So uh, I think that the uh, shipping and packing is, is plenty adequate to make sure your watch arrives unscathed. So, uh, there's a couple of other things in this cardboard box, which we'll take a look at first. I'm going to pull out the wooden box. You can see it's got the Jord branding on it there. And we will take a, a closer look at that in just a moment. But, uh, the first thing that I wanted to show is this right here. So I think this must be a polishing and cleaning cloth. It's just a microfiber type cloth. It says Jord on it. It's quite soft for dusting and cleaning your watch. And then over here, oh, I might not be able to get this out easily. Let's see if we can lift this up a little bit to get it out. Okay, after some struggling, I got it out. Uh, it's this right here. It's what's labeled as Jord Preserve. And it says on the back here, 100% natural finishing oil, specifically formulated for the care and conditioning of your Jord Wood watch. So this is what you would use to take care of your watch. And uh, you can see it's got a little brush on the end. I guess you turn this, this little knob dial on the end here to make the oil come out and then you apply it with the brush 
has a little cap. Makes nice little sounds. Uh, and then you would polish it with the cloth that they include. So that's great that they include some product to uh, take care of your watch. Having never owned a wood watch before, I haven't a clue how far this goes, how long it will last, uh, or even how often you need to condition your watch. But uh, I believe that information is available on their website, and I suspect it's packed in here as well. We'll take a look once we get to the wooden box there. But anyway, that's nice to see. All right, let's move this box out of the way and bring in the main event. Okay, so this is the real item of interest here, as nice as those little pack-ins are. And the watch resides within. Uh, this wooden box is quite cute. It comes with uh, the Jord logo embossed on the front, or engraved, I guess, and uh, also on this side here, and it's my understanding that you can get this box engraved with a custom message, or your name, or, or what have you, if you're getting this as a gift for someone, you could Get a special message put on there. There's the bottom. Not a whole lot going on. But you do see this right here. And uh, I have taken, I will admit, I've taken a quick peek at this box and the contents already. But what this is, is a little drawer. A very cute little drawer. Uh, with these little magnetic contact points, which uh, makes sure it stays in, so put it back in, sort of snap shut like that, and in this little drawer, you could keep, maybe not that one, it's a little large, but you could keep your, your oil, and uh, there are a couple of other items in here, as you'll see in a moment, that you would probably also want to put in there. I love the sounds this box makes. So, nice little wooden box uh, for storage, really. I mean, you could keep this on your, you know, on your dresser in your room or something and use it for storing the watch and the accoutrements. So, let's take the top off here. There we go. The top, too, is magnetic. You can see little magnetic contacts down here and, uh, oops and in the lid there. While I tap away, you can get a peek at the watch in there. Okay. And here we see the Meridian Nightfall nestled in its box, and I don't know about you guys, but I think it makes a pretty striking first impression. Um, 
there's no doubt that it is a handsome watch. Certainly, in my opinion. You know, obviously aesthetics are a matter of personal taste. So, um, but I think this one looks pretty nice. But uh, we'll take a much closer look at it here. So, let's just pull it out. And uh, actually, we'll set that aside for just a moment. The first little thing we have in here is a little baggie with a couple of extensions for the watch strap. Just little extra links for the watch strap. And uh, the watch comes pre-sized. Uh, you can download a little ruler from George's website. You can print it out, cut it out, and then place it around your wrist to measure your wrist size, and then uh, provide that to them when ordering, and the watch will come sized. But uh, if it's not quite right, or you need to accommodate uh, slightly larger wrists, these are available. Which is a nice inclusion. They are of course made of the same wood as the rest of the watch. So that's something that you would put in your little drawer down here. We have a little hashtag Jord watch card. Share your Jord watch it says all kinds of social media platforms. And on the back here it says, share your photos on social media. Use our hashtag Jordwatch for a chance to be featured on our feeds and website. If you would like to do so, encouraging you to do the social media thing. Little accordion situation there. There we go. Okay, so this is the Jord Meridian Series User Guide, I suppose. I suppose that's what we would call it. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment, but let's just get to the bottom of the box here so we can move it aside. And here we have uh, another microfiber cloth. This one is finer. Perhaps this one is for polishing the glass, the watch glass as opposed to the wood. I'm not quite sure which is for which, but uh, that's my guess. This looks an awful lot like the kind of microfiber cloth you get with a pair of glasses, like eyeglasses. So I think that's what that's for. Whereas the other fuzzier one here is for uh, polishing the wood with the oil. Side there. And then we are left with the interior of the box, which has these air holes in it, I suppose, to allow air to circulate through the box, maybe, to prevent it from getting too humid. And this is, I assume, to protect the wood because you don't want it getting too hot or too cold or too humid or too dry. All of those are bad for wood. And it's got this stenciled jord in the bottom there. And that goes right through to the, the, I don't know if you can tell, but there you go. The little chamber with the drawer. That is the box. It's a very cute little box. It looks very functional. The drawer has this little uh, divot for your fingers to grab onto. Uh, and for the most part, the presentation is really nice. 
only complaint I have is that there are some little blemishes. Some little issues with the fit and finish uh, of the box. Specifically, I noticed on the lid. There's a little blemish there. There's a couple of little on the inside. Very minor, though. I don't think I saw any others. No. Some right there. But these are wood products. I mean, they're not... They're always going to be slightly imperfect. Um, by and large, I think this is a really nice way to store your watch and to present the watch. So, oops. It's a pretty strong magnet. <laughs> it's got some grip to it. Alright, we'll get to the watch eventually. We've got a lot to say about the watch too, so but let's quickly look at the user guide here. So we know what we're getting into. It has a little our story. If you want to read about Jord. Table of contents. Model components talks about the uh, the movement, all kinds of statistics and that sort of thing, the buckle, and we'll talk more about all of that, so we don't need to look at that right now. It talks about water resistance. It essentially says that it's water resistant, splash resistant, but probably shouldn't be submerged. Normal sink activities and getting in the rain are no issue. Showering, swimming, and diving should be avoided. That's basically what it says. And that's largely, I think, because water's bad for the wood, right? Talks about care and maintenance here. The biggest enemy of wood is sudden and extreme changes in temperature and humidity. It says so right there. about swelling and shrinkage under different humidities, care and maintenance, talks about the preserve finishing oil, and the polishing cloth It says, use the following products and procedures prior to wearing your watch, and then again in six months. That's how it describes it here, use the applicator brush to apply the finishing oil onto all wood areas of your watch. Use the cloth to rub the oil into the watch. Let it sit for 10 minutes. Some contact info. This is how to set your Meridian watch. Looks like the crown has three stop positions, A, B, and C. different positions adjust different things I guess talks about winding the watch unscrew the crown in position A pop it out to B right of course so you can wind it in position B and set the time in position C which makes perfect sense and perhaps most importantly of all the warranty Short watches evidently come with a one-year warranty. It would be nice if that was a bit longer, but uh, I suppose that's pretty standard, one-year warranty. Uh, and then it talks about servicing and repairs under warranty or outside of warranty. You can send your watch back for repairs after the warranty has run out. Of course, there will be a charge. Anyway, it's nice that they're very upfront about that warranty. Okay, with all that preamble and stuff out of the way, let's look at the actual watch, finally. So this is how it comes presented. It's on this burlap cushion, I guess. 
with George branding on it. You can see there. It comes with a little George medallion made of wood. The George logo. Very nicely presented. Uh, and no doubt well protected in transit like this. If you're wondering why the surface looks a little grimy right now, it's because it's got plastic. Plastic over the watch glass. We'll take that off in just a moment. This model here, as I mentioned at the beginning, is the uh, part of the Meridian series, which is uh, one of George's newer series and one of their more expensive watches uh, and this is the nightfall colorway there are four different colorways available for this watch this is the darkest of the four uh, this watch features automatic mechanical movement and we'll talk a bit more about what that means, or a lot more about what that means, further along in this review. Uh, but essentially, it means that there's uh, only mechanical components inside, gears and springs and such, no electronic components. And the automatic part means that it, as long as you wear it, it basically powers itself uh, indefinitely, which is a pretty neat trick. And then again, we'll talk more about how exactly it does that. This is uh, as opposed to um, an electronic, a battery-powered watch with quartz movement. Uh, and as you might imagine, the, you know, mechanical designs, mechanical movement is much more uh, intricate and certainly requires uh, more investment of time, more craftsmanship, I guess you could say, uh, than, uh, you know, like a quartz movement watch. And so these are often favored by enthusiasts and collectors. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in a bit, but anyway, so let's, uh, let's take it off this pillow here. The backside, you can see it's got this double sided butterfly clasp made of anodized steel, it pops off very nicely. There we go. Don't think I can easily get this little medallion off if I've been thinking. I would have brought some scissors to snip it off, but anyway, we're gonna have to live with it for now. I might go grab some in a moment. So, the here you know what now's a good time let's peel off this plastic there we go and there you can see the unobstructed view of the face and actually it's still got a little bit of gunk on it so why don't we give it a first first time polish here Try out their included polishing cloth. And then we will take a closer look at the watch. I'll talk about all the various aspects of it because there's a lot to see, a lot to talk about. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Okay. Put that out of the way. So let's first of all talk about the construction of this thing, the main body of the watch. Uh, most of George's watches are made of predominantly wood. Well, they're all they're all wood. They're wooden watches. That's kind of their gig. But this one in particular is uh, wood and steel. So the body of the watch is reinforced with steel. Uh, and this is ostensibly for added strength and durability. Uh, it also just looks pretty cool. Uh, but in particular, it's got this steel bezel 
around the watch glass surrounding the face here, which um, should make it more like resistant to abrasion and wear on the front there, I guess. Um, it's got a steel, uh, what they call, I think, a foundation, which is the bottom, the base, the back, if you will. We'll talk more about the back in a second. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then these the lug ends that attach to the wrist strap are also anodized steel. And of course the links in the band are steel as well. So this is sort of a hybrid design, I guess. Steel and wood. It's, that's specific to the Meridian series. I think other watches in their lineup have steel accents, but... And then, uh, yeah, of course the clasp as well, the butterfly clasp, butterfly clasp. Um, but the wood, which you can see very nicely in profile here, hopefully, is uh, two kinds of wood, actually. We've got ebony, which is this dark wood on top here. And then we've got what's called purple heart wood, which is this kind of purpley reddish wood underneath. And you can see that the strap is similarly made of fused ebony and purple heart wood on the interior there. Now, uh, these are pretty exotic woods. They're not your everyday kinds of woods. Um, and when I was initially looking at George watches, when they first contacted me and I was taking a look at their stuff, they, uh, or I, I asked them about the sustainability of uh, this wood. Because um, I know, for instance, that in some countries the harvest of ebony has been uh, banned, basically. It's illegal because they are endangered species. And what I was told by uh, the George representative I was talking to uh, was that sustainability is really important to the company. Uh, and they go to great lengths to make sure that uh, all their wood is uh, ecologically sustainable uh, and um, ethically sourced. And what that means, uh, specifically, is that most of their more common woods are uh, obtained from fallen trees, so trees that have fallen of natural causes. Uh, such that they don't, um, or, you know, so that they don't contribute to deforestation. Stuff like their koa wood, evidently, is sourced that way. Uh, they're more exotic woods, uh, like these ones, like the ebony, like the purple heart, are uh, actually uh, salvaged from furniture remnants. So this is all secondhand wood, essentially. Uh, which is great. I'm actually really glad to hear that because that lets me know uh, that uh, I don't necessarily have to, to worry about uh, where this wood is coming from, what's being deforested to supply it. It's essentially being recycled, which is pretty cool. Upcycled, as they like to call it, but the concept is the same. So uh, the ebony which is the darker wood that's visible on sort of the exterior here, is uh, from trees of the genus Diospyros. Several species that are typically used for ornamental ebony wood. Uh, and it's a very hard and dense wood. Uh, it has a very, very fine grain you might be able to just see it, just make it out at certain angles. You can see the fine, tightly packed grain there. Um, but it's highly prized because it is so hard, it is so dense, and it polishes up really nicely. It has this natural luster to it, so it should be both durable uh, and nice to look at. Uh, Ebony is actually pretty hard to work with tools. 
um, because it's so hard. So it requires special cutting tools uh, that don't wear down uh, so much. Typical cutting tools will just get dulled very quickly. Uh, and also, fun fact, the uh, sawdust from ebony is both highly flammable and toxic. Uh, it's very, very fine, and it can linger in the air for, like, days after the wood has been cut. Uh, and you don't want to inhale that. So working with ebony is actually pretty tricky, evidently. I'm no woodworker, but this is what I've read. And the purple heart, which is this reddy wood, reddish, purpley red, anyway. Also, I'm colorblind, don't forget, so. <laughs> uh, but the purple heart, as you can see in there, is uh, a similar kind of wood in that it is also very hard and very dense. Uh, it's from a different genus, though, and I'm going to mangle the pronunciation, but Peltogyne, 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 I'm not quite sure, but anyway. Uh, it's a... Uh, a, uh, another genus of trees. It's native to Central and South America, I believe. Um, and uh, the heartwood from these trees is naturally uh, sort of a, a rich purple hue grading through to a sort of reddish color. And as it's exposed to UV light, it tends to go from purpley to more reddish brown. Uh, but uh, it can be treated to protect it from that kind of color conversion. Uh, either way, uh, like ebony, very fine-grained, straight grain, uh, and also very difficult to work with uh, for many, much the same reasons, because it is so hard and dense. Uh, and it similarly creates to toxic sawdust that's dangerous to inhale. So. Typically, both these woods are reserved for, like, fine ornamentation, inlay, and things like that, or watches, in our case. But uh, they do make for a very handsome-looking combination. A very nice-looking watch. You can hear them, too. Eh? This watch is, uh, it's much heavier than I expected, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it is really, really heavy. The body itself is super dense, and that's probably a combination of things. It's probably the steel uh, contributing to the weight and the mechanism inside, but also the fact that those woods are so dense, right? So, the strap has got a nice weightiness to it as well. Uh, but the whole thing feels like very, very solid. I'm a little concerned that when I get it on my wrist, it's going to feel like super heavy. Uh, but I guess we'll find out when I put it on, won't we? So let's take a quick look at the watch glass here. Watch glass is, of course, a glass covering the face of the watch. Hopefully you can see it there. Uh, the watch glass on the Meridian series is made of Sapphire crystal, which is one of several materials that is commonly used for watch glasses, and it's generally the most desirable. Uh, that is because sapphire crystal is uh, very, very hard. Uh, it's, if you're familiar with a Mohs hardness scale, uh, which ranks the hardness of minerals from like 0 to 10, diamond being 10, uh, sapphire rates a 9. Uh, it is actually the third hardest naturally occurring substance uh, in the world. Uh, and so uh, sapphire crystal, in this case, uh, almost certainly synthetic, um, but nonetheless, uh, same, same properties as natural stuff. Uh, sapphire crystal or glass, sometimes it's called sapphire glass, is super scratch resistant and uh, shatter resistant as well. Uh, you'd be very, very hard pressed to scratch the face or the, the glass of this watch. Uh, there's almost nothing that, that could, mostly like a diamond tipped tool, and you go at it <laughs> with it. 
Um, so that's good. Nice to know that it's going to be wear resistant and it shouldn't get scuffed and scratched. Uh, and it's slightly domed. You can see it is a slightly convex dome. And that is to uh, try and minimize reflections and refraction on the face of the watch, evidently. So, domed sapphire crystal watch glass. I took the liberty just there of uh, snipping off that little medallion, as cool as it was. It was kind of getting in the way. I thought you could get a better view of things without it there, so. Uh, let's take a closer look at the watch face now. Uh, you can see a few different features here. Uh, it's got the, the first, you know, the most eye-catching thing is those two wheels down at the bottom there. Those are the balance wheels of the watch mechanism. And I'll talk more about what those do uh, shortly. Uh, because they're very important. They're kind of the heart of the movement, really. Uh, and you can see they're both going, spinning, oscillating right now. Uh, those very observant among you might have noticed that they weren't doing that when I started the video, when I first unpacked the watch. Uh, and that has to do with the automatic nature of this watch. You see, in, in transit, the watch ran down. Uh, I imagine it was packed wound up, but uh, over time, of course, it loses energy. Um, but uh, motion of the sort that I'm doing right now, moving this thing around, actually powers the watch. And I'll, well, again, we'll take a closer look in a moment. But anyway, uh, those two sort of balance wheels, this dual wheel open heart design, as they call it, uh, is quite ostentatious in a way, isn't it? it? It looks really cool. I love having some exposed mechanism like that. I think it looks really neat. Uh, but I think that's nicely balanced in this design by the relative austerity of the rest of the face. It's got this pretty minimalistic uh, dial to it with just these little little tick marks. Uh, and really very little else going on there. Uh, and you might notice that it does have one more item up at the top there. It's got this little dial situation, which is uh, a meter that measures the power reserve remaining for the watch. And so, uh, you know, when you start off, you can uh, wind it up to charge up that power reserve. Uh, it's essentially a measure of the potential energy uh, stored within the spring inside the watch uh, that drives the motion. Uh, and then as you wear it, as long as you wear it frequently, you know, daily, uh, that power reserve should stay topped up. But it gives you an idea if it's declining and if you need to wind it up again. You can see it's got, what is it here, I think it's 40? Yeah, this watch has a 40 hour power reserve. Let's see if I can get it to focus there for you. Can you see it? Oh, you can hear it, listen. Very faintly, you can hear it clicking away, ticking. It's pretty quiet, but there it is. Time's obviously not right. It's not set right now. But uh, anyway, uh, and then the back of the face is this sort of slightly grainy matte texture. But I think the flashiness of those those dual balance wheels there, exposed mechanism, I think it's it is offset very nicely by the the relative minimalism of the rest of the watch face. In terms of functionality, you know, you've got your hours, minutes, seconds, uh, and then that readout for power reserve, and that's it. There's no 
date or anything, days of the week or anything like that on here. But uh, if you want that kind of functionality, maybe you're better off getting a different kind of watch. Um, but let's be honest, this is much more of a, a statement, a fashion statement, a collector's item, than it is about the actual functionality of the watch. I mean, we all carry smartphones in our pockets these days anyway, if you really need to know the time, so. All right, now that we've had a look at the face, we're going to flip this thing around and take a look at the back and talk more about the mechanism and the movement. Okay, so here we are looking at the back of the watch. Uh, and you can see that all the innards are exposed in there. The gears and the rotor and everything. Uh, what I'm actually going to do quickly is some plastic on the back here. I'm just going to pull that off. There we go. And with the heck, let's give it a little polish too, shall we? So we can make sure we can see it all nice and clearly. So the uh, back face, back plate of the watch is just like the front um, sapphire crystal. So that gives us a nice view of the exposed innards of the watch. There, you can see it quite clearly there. The movement, as they call it. Uh, the movement of this watch is the so-called George JHLS32, which as far as I can tell is George's own custom design. I know some of their uh, like lower-end and mid-range models use movements uh, provided by other companies. But I believe this is one of their only custom designs. I assume they must source parts or purchase components of it from third-party suppliers, but uh, I think the design is their own in-house. So uh, what this is is an automatic mechanical design. And like I said, uh, a mechanical design simply means that all the parts are mechanical. Uh, such as springs and and gears and rotors and bearings and all that good stuff. Uh, there are no electronic components in there, no battery power required. Uh, of course, uh, quartz movement watch, which you might be familiar with, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, requires a battery. It has electronic circuitry in it. Um, and for this reason, these mechanical watches, I'm trying to hold it in such a way you can see it, but it's hard to get a good angle for you. Uh, for that reason, these mechanical watches tend to be more expensive. <laughs> they are certainly more intricate, uh, and they require more labor to construct. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, they're any better at keeping time. Uh, quartz watches are, in fact, more accurate than mechanical watches. Uh, but you get a mechanical watch for the novelty, right? For the craftsmanship, mostly just because it's, it's freaking cool. You know, it's the culmination of, like, hundreds of years of, of craft, of uh, designing these things. Uh, and so that's why they're favored by collectors. They are pretty cool items. Uh, and they're just as much about the novelty as they are about, you know, keeping time. And about looking cool. They're definitely about looking cool. <laughs> um, this particular model is advertised as having uh, an accuracy of about plus or minus 45 seconds a day. Which... Uh, I don't really know how that stacks up, honestly, uh, because I'm not a watch expert, as I've said. Uh, I mean, that seems reasonable to me. You might have to adjust the time every few days or something like that, I guess, but hopefully it's uh, less often than that. Uh, but anyway, that is the advertised accuracy of this thing. Uh, as I did mention, it is splash-proof, 
evidently, but it's not the kind of thing you want to submerge in water. Uh, I think the mechanism is probably pretty well contained in there, but the wood would definitely suffer. So let's talk a little bit more about how this thing works. So in a mechanical design like this, uh, energy is stored in the so-called mainspring, which I don't think we can see here. It's hard to tell, but I don't think we can see the mainspring. Uh, but uh, that is supplied either by, by winding the crown, which is this little item right here, Actually, we didn't really look at the crown earlier, but if you take a close peek, maybe you can see it's got the Jord logo on it, which is a really cute little uh, detail. I quite like that. Uh, so you can wind the crown and power it up that way. Uh, or it can be supplied by the rotor, which is this spinny half disc that you see on the back here. Uh, and this is what makes this watch a so-called automatic watch, a self-winding watch. As you wear the watch on your wrist, and you move about, move your arm, your hand, your wrist, the natural motions transfer to the rotor, and that serves to wind the mainspring as you're wearing the watch. And uh, I think with this one, if you wear it uh, daily, more or less, for about eight hours a day, it should never wind down. It should never run out of power. Now that power reserve that you saw on the front should stay topped up. Um, but of course, if it doesn't, if you don't wear it for a few days and it runs down, you can just wind it back up with the crown there. So uh, I'm going to try and angle this so we can see some of the the text on the back here. It's hard to read. You know what? I'm going to read it out, first of all, and then I'll try and show it to you, because I have to look at it myself here. It says, uh, born in St. Louis. St. Louis? St. Louis? St. Louis? I should really know how to pronounce that. St. Louis, we're going to say. Apologies to those who live there if I'm pronouncing your city wrong. Uh, Sapphire Crystal Automatic, it says, JHLS32, which is the movement, 100% natural wood crafted, and has a date on it. It says 11-21-2017, so this particular model was crafted back on November 11th, 2017. This particular, uh, one, whatever you call this particular watch. Uh, and it says then, on the rotor, it says 47 joules, JHLS 32. I'm trying to show that to you here, and I'll explain what that means in a second. There you go. I think you can probably see it. 47 joules. So what the heck does that mean? Well, uh, this refers to the number of joule bearings inside the watch. And these bearings are usually made from a uh, synthetic ruby or sapphire. And they're used uh, because they uh, reduce metal on metal friction, which is not good. You don't want metal wearing on metal because it wears down both sides of the equation. And it generates a lot of heat. Metal is a good conductor of heat. So jewel bearings are much more resistant to heat. They do not heat up as much. Uh, and they generally reduce the wear and tear on metal components in the watch. So overall, uh, jewel bearings uh, reduce wear, increase longevity, and increase accuracy of the watch. And generally, higher jewel counts are associated with a a higher quality movement, uh, historically, anyway. But uh, that's not always the case, necessarily. Um, there are limits, essentially, is what it comes down to. Uh, seven joules, as I understand it, is considered uh, quite reliable. Uh, once you get up to about 27 joules, 
you kind of hit the maximum number of useful jewel bearings that you can fit in a watch. So anything beyond 27 jewels is considered to be kind of superfluous. Um, so where do those extra jewels come from then? Why are they calling this a 27 jewel or 20, 47, excuse me, 47 jewel watch? Well, uh, evidently in sort of the mid 20th century, 50s and 60s, it was very popular to include uh, basically non-functional jewels, jewel bearings in your watch, uh, sort of extraneous bearings simply to increase the jewel count for marketing purposes because people were used to uh, looking at the number of jewel bearings as a mark of quality, right? Uh, and then in the 1970s, uh, the watchmaking industry uh, established standards, basically prohibiting uh, watchmakers from including a bunch of superfluous jewels uh, f simply for the purpose of artificially inflating their jewel count. Uh, however, this is what my reading on the internet has told me, is that there are evidently still loopholes in those standards that uh, allow manufacturers to sort of inflate their jewel count by including jewels that are technically functional, yes, but of dubious mechanical value, basically. Like they're in there, they're doing a thing, but uh, whether they actually improve the movement or accuracy or longevity of the, uh, the watch is up for debate. Um, this movement, as we saw on the back, advertises 47 jewels, which uh, that seems like a lot. Now, I don't know enough about this particular movement or really about watches in general um, to say whether all of those jewels are necessary or not. Um, so I, I wouldn't read too much into that number in terms of like directly comparing it to other movements in other watches, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's, they're not functional, I'm just saying I don't know. And I know that there is such a thing as what they call up jeweling or jewel inflation. That has evidently been an issue with, uh, you know, the watchmaking industry in the past, anyway. Uh, but I don't think they're hurting it either. <laughs> I think you can probably rest assured that there are certainly sufficient jewels in this watch uh, to do what it needs to do, and do it quite well. So that's the story of the jewels. So the last thing I'd like to talk about here in terms of the movement, the mechanism, is that dual wheel design, which is so prominently featured on the face of this watch. Um, so what exactly is a balance wheel in a watch? Well, uh, the balance wheel in a watch is kind of like the pendulum on a clock. Uh, the job of the balance wheel is to rapidly spin, oscillate, as they say, uh, and drive the hands of the watch. Uh, they're the pacing, the heart, the heartbeat of the watch, if you will. Um, and the balance wheel can be tuned to oscillate faster or slower, which in turn will make the watch run faster or slower. So the balance wheels are very important for the accuracy of the timekeeping of the watch. And this particular movement, as you can see, has two balance wheels. That is not standard. Uh, a typical design only requires one balance wheel. So why two? Well, the theory goes, anyway, I'll turn it upside down there, you can see some different parts of the mechanism. Uh, the theory goes that uh, a pair of balance wheels can take advantage of a phenomenon called uh, resonance, which uh, basically means that multiple oscillators in the system can improve the stability of the oscillation in the system. 
uh, and I don't really know or understand a whole lot more than that, but that seems to be the working theory, and by improving the stability of the oscillating system, you are improving the accuracy of the watch, and the timekeeping ability of the watch. However, uh, there does seem to be, like so many things, a fair bit of disagreement on the internet uh, about the actual utility of having uh, two balance wheels, uh, whether it's actually the case that they improve the accuracy, or whether it's more for show. Um, there have certainly been instances in past where uh, cheaper mechanical watches have included a second balance wheel uh, specifically for show. Uh, and it doesn't contribute meaningfully to the movement or the accuracy or anything like that. So this is another situation where I don't know enough about watches uh, or about this particular specific movement uh, to say whether that is or isn't the case here. Um, but they both appear to be spinning. Uh, and whether they're both contributing or not, I don't know. But I'm willing to give Jor the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, I have no reason to doubt that this is, in fact, a true uh, dual-wheel design. They seem quite proud of it on their website. Uh, but perhaps somebody that knows more about watches could shed some light on that. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to raise the... Uh, the issue here anyway mention it bring it to your attention i guess uh and of course i will be testing out this watch so let's uh let's talk about that so what i'm going to do now now that we've had that huge info dump and taken our tour around the watch here um is i'm going to try this thing out i'm going to wear it uh you know every day for the next week or so maybe a little longer um and I'm going to keep a log of my experiences with it, such as how accurate it is, how often I need to wind it, uh, how it feels to wear, um, does it, you know, power itself properly with the automatic mechanism, keep time properly, uh, and also what other people think of it, you know, because uh, that's an important part of this as well, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, remarks I may or may not get about it, so... Uh, that's my plan. I'm going to be wearing it for the next while, and in uh, a week's time or so, I'm going to come back here, and we're going to chat about it, and we'll let you know all about uh, how I felt wearing this watch, using this watch, and give you my impressions and final verdict on the Jord Meridian Nightfall. Ta-da! It's been a week. <laughs> it's been a little over a week, actually. Uh, and I've been wearing the watch daily for that period of time. And uh, this is the part of the video where I tell you guys uh, what my impressions are of using it day to day. So I'm going to break this down into sections. And the first thing I want to talk about is uh, what does it feel like to wear? So uh, the first thing is that it's fitted pretty well. I'll show it to you here. Hopefully it'll focus for you. You can see that uh, it's just about the right fit. There's a little bit of movement on the arm there, but not too much, maybe about an inch. And it sits pretty comfortably on my wrist. It doesn't really sag or flop over or anything like that. So uh, this was fitted by Yod. I sent them in my measurements, uh, and I believe that's regularly a ten dollar additional fee uh, but if you win the giveaway that uh, we're doing here that i mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, fitting is included free of charge so anyway i think they did a pretty good job of fitting it and it's quite comfortable in that sense and like we saw during the unboxing there are additional links provided so that you can extend the band if you need to, if you find it uncomfortable the way that it ships. Um, 
this watch is pretty darn heavy. It's pretty large and it's pretty heavy. I believe the face of the watch, I should have looked this up, but the, the specs for the Meridian series are on Yod's website, but I think it's a 54 millimeter uh, body on this thing, which is uh, a little bigger than average, maybe not outside of the realm of normal for a men's watch. They tend to be a little bigger, a little chunkier, but I have pretty narrow wrists, and this is about as big as I would want to go on my wrist. I think anything bigger would look a little bit goofy, uh, but this, this does, I think, look all right and feel pretty good, even on my narrower wrists. Uh, and it's heavy. <laughs> this is a very dense piece of machinery. I can't convey that on video, obviously, but you'll just have to, to take my word for it that this is a very dense, heavy, and relatively large watch. Uh, despite all that, though, and despite uh, having not worn a watch for many, many years, uh, I got used to wearing it pretty quickly. Uh, and after a few days, uh, it definitely started to feel comfortable on my wrist. In fact, it started to feel weird if I wasn't wearing it. So i become quite used to having this on my wrist, and it's uh, not an issue. It's not uh, interfering with any regular function, day-to-day -day function, or anything like that. So uh, the one thing I will point out is that this strap, which is made from these links, that you saw earlier, these links of ebony and purple heartwood. Uh, it is uh, nice and pliable, but uh, it did tug at the uh, hairs, my little arm hairs, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, it's happening less now. Uh, maybe it's just pulled out all the ones that uh, were particularly, uh, you know, in the way. Um, so it did tug at the hairs a little bit, but uh, that's pretty minor. It's probably the case with pretty much any watch band made of links like this. And like I said, it, I don't notice it uh, so much anymore. So uh, that is the comfort story. It's a pretty comfortable watch to wear, I found. So the next question here is how does it look? And you guys already know from the unboxing, but uh, uh, I think this looks really, really good. Uh, I think it looks exceptional. Um, and I think that Yod does uh, a really great job of balancing uh, something, or, you know, making um, a watch that looks both elegant and uh, a little bit flashy, right? The exotic hardwoods in this model, in particular, the ebony and the purple heartwood, uh, make it a pretty unique piece. I don't think there's that many watches out there manufactured with those woods. And in general, uh, using wood for a watch uh, means that there's some individuality. Each watch is somewhat unique because of the natural variation in the wood. And you don't see that so much in this particular model because ebony and purple heart are both very uh, fine-grained, fairly sort of consistent-looking woods. But, you know, you do get some distinction in the coloration of the purple heart, which in this one is sort of a, uh, a very deep burgundy, almost. Uh, and certainly in other models with uh, coarser-grained woods, you'll see more variation from one watch to the next. Uh, so I love that the the wood sets it apart like that. Uh, I also think that the exposed mechanism is really, really cool. And I'm a sucker for that kind of thing, but you can see those dual balance wheels spinning away in there. And of course on the back, all that exposed movement with the rotor there but everything all the gears and stuff just looks super super cool and quite frankly it makes for uh, 
uh, a great conversation piece. Uh, this is the kind of watch that will grab people's attention because it looks unique, it looks interesting. And um, as a matter of fact, I got nothing but very positive um, res comments, um, responses, reception, I guess, uh, to the watch. Lots of people uh, noticing it, commenting on it, because again, I don't normally wear a wristwatch, so uh, it did stand out for people a little bit. And generally, the, the response was something along the lines of like, whoa, that looks really nice. That looks like money. <laughs> That looks really fancy um, and then a desire to take a closer look at it because it's got these cool spinny bits right um, so in that sense I think this watch uh, sets out or accomplishes exactly what it sets out to do which is to uh, look really great I think it accomplishes that quite nicely and last but certainly not least is how does it function uh, so that there's a few pieces to that question, obviously. Uh, one is uh, this buckle, which I didn't really talk about during the unboxing, but let's focus it in here. Uh, it's a fairly simple design, a, a dual butterfly design, I think they call it, and it works just great. It's uh, simple to use. It took me about a day or two to get used to sticking it on my arm, but it's sturdy. And it's very functional so buckle works very nicely it's also quite easy to set and wind uh, I mentioned it in the unboxing although I don't believe I I did it or showed it but uh, it's just this little crown right here so all you have to do is unscrew the crown it's a screw down crown and it pops out you can pop it out in stages one stage two stage depending on whether you want to wind it up or set it so let's just uh, do a little winding here so you can hear it in action I don't want to overwind it because uh, it has this this handy little uh, power reserve dial here up at the top as you can see and it's already topped out uh, and it's topped out because uh, it is uh, gotta push it back in and screw down the crown here we go uh, it's topped out because it is working as intended as I mentioned this is an automatic self-winding mechanical watch so that rotor on the back is responsible for winding the watch during daily use and it does that quite well uh, I said as I said I've worn this daily uh, for probably eight ish hours a day and uh, it's not come anywhere close to running out of the power reserve it's been down to about half around the 20 mark but that's about it so it does wind itself quite capably over the course of a day uh, so one thing that I did notice about this watch is that it has gained uh, a little bit of time over the eight days that I've been wearing it since I set it uh, it's gained about two and a half minutes so if you do the math that works out to uh, a little under 20 seconds per day uh, the literature did mention that this particular movement is rated for plus or minus 45 seconds a day. And I said during the unboxing that I didn't think that was too egregious. Um, but I've since done a little bit of research and looked at other watches, even other watches in uh, Yod's lineup. And that plus or minus 45 seconds figure is quite high. Uh, it's the highest that I was able to find, as a matter of fact. Um, and so I asked uh, my Yod representative about it. I asked why it's rated uh, for such a, a wide range like that. Um, 
and uh, I was essentially told that it's a very conservative rating. Uh, and that typically these watches perform better and are more accurate than that. And I would say that my personal experience does bear that out, um, gaining a little under 20 seconds per day. Now, is that excellent? Like, is that top-tier performance for a watch movement? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, and again, I'm no watch expert, but uh, my understanding is that uh, really top-tier movements uh, gain about that much in a month, for instance. Like, uh, in fact, Yod's own uh, watch, the model above this, the Sawyer series, uh, is rated for uh, about plus or minus 30 seconds in a month, I think. Uh, so that is not spectacular accuracy. Um, and if you're looking for a precision timepiece, this is probably not it but uh, you're probably not buying this for a precision timepiece. You're buying this because it looks awesome uh, and because you think it's a neat and unique uh, piece uh, and you want to uh, wear uh, kind of a unique piece of art on your wrist. At least that's, uh, that's why I would buy something like this. So, uh, and one other aspect of this is the durability. Now, I wasn't certain about uh, how this would stand up to daily wear because, you know, wood is by nature a little bit soft uh, and it's prone to scratches and things like that. But um, this particular model, at least, the Meridian series, is reinforced with that steel bezel around the outside of the face there. Uh, and this watch has no noticeable blemishes after uh, eight days of regular wear. Uh, it has suffered a few bumps and scrapes, but none of them have left a mark on it. So I would say that uh, the uh, durability is quite good, quite good indeed. Also worth noting is that I had some readability issues with the watch, especially in lower light. Now, of course, it's got no illumination, so it's not going to be readable in the dark. But this particular colorway uses black hands on a very dark gray, almost black background. You can see it there. And you can probably appreciate how that might be difficult to read. And as a matter of fact, this is one thing that many people that I showed this watch to also commented on, that uh, the readability was not fantastic. Uh, which leads me to wonder why they didn't go with maybe uh, silver-toned hands or gold-toned hands that would match uh, some of the the uh, ornamentation on those uh, balance wheels there uh, or even match the marks around the outside of the face. Uh, I think that would have been a better choice personally uh, and improve the readability of the watch. Certainly still usable, you know, most of the time, but I did have to peer a little closer than I thought was necessary or that should then should be necessary, I guess. And it is something that other people picked up on as well. Okay, so that sums up my impressions uh, after having used this watch for a little over a week. Now we'll run down the pros and the cons as we do. And because I've spoken about this stuff at length already during the impressions, this is going to be a pretty quick rundown. So let's start with the pros. The first thing that really struck me about the Meridian Nightfall was its beautiful presentation. I thought that box was really lovely. I like that it comes with a couple of different cloths for maintaining, taking care of your watch, as well as that oil with the little applicator brush. I just thought that it was really, really nicely presented. Definitely felt like a premium product. Second thing is it's gorgeous design. This is a looker. This is a really lovely watch, and I've said it a couple of times, but I love the way Yod has balanced the simplicity 
and elegance uh, of the design of the face and dial with the eye-catching conversation piece that is that open heart dual wheel design and being able to see all of the movement uh, through that sapphire crystal window on the back of the watch. Uh, and that domed sapphire crystal uh, watch glass really catches the light in some lovely ways. And this particular colorway I think is really, really nice, this nightfall color um, arrangement uh, because it's subtle, it's dark, uh, and I think that's just my aesthetic, but it also will go with a whole lot of outfits. It'll match with a lot of things as well. So really, really gorgeous design on this watch. Third positive point, exceptional build quality. Uh, this watch feels incredibly solid. Uh, it just has a, a weightiness and a density to it that makes it feel like a, like a luxury product. Uh, and it's very, very durable. Uh, like I said, it did suffer a few bumps and scrapes over the course of the week, just through regular use, uh, and it's come out completely unscathed. So exceptional build quality on this watch. And the fourth item in a similar vein is the immaculate fit and finish. Uh, this ties into the design and the aesthetics and also to the build quality, but I really wanted to call it out as a separate point because uh, having spent quite a bit of time looking at this watch very carefully <laughs> uh, over a number of days, uh, it is basically flawless. Uh, the wood is just beautiful with this gorgeous natural luster. There are no blemishes or uh, marks or anything. There's no gaps around the face or in the design. It is pristine, immaculate, lovely build quality. All right, now let's talk cons. And I've got a couple of items for this list, just a couple. The first is that uh, that mediocre accuracy that I talked about. Uh, like I said, my particular watch appears to be gaining 18 to 19 seconds per day. Is that a deal breaker? No, but uh, for such a fancy design, a fancy movement with this dual balance wheel set up that's supposed to improve accuracy and these 47 joules that are supposed to improve accuracy and longevity, it would have been nice to see slightly higher accuracy ratings and then slightly higher realized accuracy on the wristwatch as well. Second thing is that generally poor readability of this particular colorway. Now, uh, like I mentioned, this particular uh, set of colors has black hands on a black face which makes it pretty hard to read them in some low light situations. Something that I noticed, something that other people noticed looking at it, and I did find myself squinting at it more than I would like to make out those hands. Uh, why they didn't choose to go with a higher contrast design, I'm not quite sure. It could be just that they wanted to keep it reserved, uh, to keep it sort of muted, and maintain that kind of um, minimalistic elegance, I guess. But then you do have those uh, dual balance wheels, which are pretty flashy right on the front as well. So now the other colorways of this model, the other ones in the Meridian series, probably don't suffer from this same issue because they're not black like this one is. So this is an issue that's pretty unique to specifically the nightfall colorway of the Meridian series. The third and final thing that I'm going to mention for this section is difficult uh, because it's a fairly subjective evaluation, and that is the price. Uh, this is not a cheap watch, 430 US dollars is not a small sum of money for most people. But I do also understand that uh, mechanical watches like this can get very, very expensive, many, many thousands of dollars. And so 
how you assign value to an item like this or where you fall on the price value question uh, is pretty personal, right? You have to factor in all kinds of things like aesthetics, of course, being a big one. Um, uh, the quality of the movement in the watch, the accuracy, uh, the prestige that comes with a given name, you know, a brand, for instance, um, and more nebulous things like, is it going to turn heads? Is it going to catch eyes? Is it going to be a cool conversation piece? Is it going to be a unique addition to a collection for you, maybe? So there's all kinds of considerations that go into how one values a wristwatch uh, or any um, luxury item for that matter. Uh, and that value judgment is going to be different from person to person. Personally, I think that, uh, I think that this is a very fair price for this watch. I think it looks and behaves like a watch at this price point ought to. Uh, but I guess what I'm getting at is that it's a luxury item and uh, it has a price tag to match. So where does that leave us? What is my final verdict on Yord's Meridian Nightfall wooden wristwatch? Well, you've basically heard it all. We've looked at this watch every which way. We've discussed it quite thoroughly. Uh, and my opinion is that if you're looking for a precision timepiece, something purely functional, there are probably better, cheaper options for you. You know, you can go buy a quartz movement watch for um, a, a fraction of the price of this, honestly. But that's not what you buy a watch like this for. Uh, you buy a watch like this because you want a unique piece, because you appreciate the craftsmanship uh, that goes into building a mechanical watch like this, uh, because you like the aesthetics, uh, because you want to wear something that's going to turn heads, that's going to be a conversation starter. You want to wear a piece of art on your wrist. That is why you buy a watch like Yord's Meridian Nightfall. And I would say that uh, to that end, it succeeds mightily. I think it uh, is a fantastic and a beautiful looking watch. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. Don't forget that we're running a giveaway. You can get $180 off a Yod watch of your choice. Uh, so head on down to the video description, click the link to get entered for that. You have two weeks from the time this video goes live to enter. So it ends on September 23rd at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure you get your entry in before then. Link down below. Uh, and hey, you can also get $25 off your purchase of a Yod watch uh, using the coupon code the ASMR nerd, uh, all one word, all lowercase. And if you'd like to browse Yod's other watches, their whole catalog, that link is also down in the video description. And I encourage you to go check it out. Extra special thanks to Yod for sending over the review sample that we looked at here today. And a special thank you to Bill from Yod, who was endlessly patient with all of my many questions about the watch. Uh, thank you, Bill, for making this happen. I hope that all of you enjoyed this video today. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you all back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys.